Hi, my name is Chase Ishii and I'm a junior at Stanford University majoring in Religious Studies and minoring in Creative Writing. Uh, one of the first things you should know about the Stanford campus is that it's really big. It's over 8,000 acres um, for a class size of about a little less than 7,000 undergraduate students and a little less than 9,000 graduate students. Uh, most of that campus consists of different graduate buildings. They have the Stanford Hospital for Medical Research, um, and then other graduate studies such as the law school building, um, engineering buildings, the business school. Um, but there's quite a, about half the campus is dedicated to undergraduate classes as well and that's where you'll be taking most of your classes. Um, one of the biggest things that makes Stanford's campus unique uh, due to its size is the fact that uh, the majority of students will live on campus for all four years of their housing. Um, they can live in either dorms or houses um, and most of these are co-ed based and also Stanford is a wet campus which means that um, in regards to their alcohol policy you can drink um, alcohol if you're underage even as long as you're drinking in a um, safe and healthy manner. Um, that's definitely one of the most unique things about the campus. Um, as far as hangout spots, um, most of the social activities will be centralized around your different dorm and uh, living residences you live with anywhere from 30 to 100 people and um, there's plenty of space outside basketball courts and lawns where you can play soccer or frisbee or just go outside and hang out in the sun and read um, but you get to know the people that live on your floor and in your complex really well because of how spread out the campus is um, there's an area there's a central area of campus called white plaza and that's where you have the bookstore the post office um, Trester Express, where you can get most of your um, restaurant food options. Um, they have Old Union, where the student government meets, and there's just lots of meeting rooms there. So if you're ever working on group projects or meeting up for clubs, that's probably where you'll be. Um, and it's also the free speech zone. So you'll see a lot of clubs tabling there or political activist groups, um, demonst proxy demonstrations. Um, that all happens in White Plaza, and that's the most central area of campus. Um, as far as my favorite building, um, Ariaga Gymnasium on East Campus is its just a giant gym on the bottom floor. They have the whole fitness workout center. They have ellipticals and uh, free weights, uh, machines, rowing machines. Um, and then on the top floor, they have a giant mat room where people will um, work out like martial arts or uh, break dancing. Uh, they have yoga. They have wrestling. They do aerobics and Pilates in there. And they also have racquetball and uh, squash courts and three large uh, full-size basketball courts and then also a rock wall, which is my personal favorite, uh, where you can top rock and boulder. And as long as you're a Stanford student, uh, you have full access to all of these um, privileges. Um, as far as food on campus, um, I've been to, I visited a good amount of colleges in California and Stanford, I think, overall has the best food. Um, there are s about six or seven different dining halls scattered around campus as well as um, every house has their own kitchen and dining lounge um, where you eat there and the food is great um, there's definitely different dietary options if you're vegetarian or vegan or gluten-free um, there's always different options for food um, and the chefs are great if you have special requests they'll make you specific foods um, you can bring, you can take food outside the dining hall, which is really convenient if you have to uh, meet people outside or go back to your room and work, um, cram out a paper or something, you can remove food. And there's just great places in Trester Express. They have places like um, Subway, Panda Express, Jamba Juice, um, the Axe and Palm, the Coho Coffee House. These are all different places where you can get food to eat and you can use um, swipes in some of them. So you're actually just spending uh, your meal plan money rather than having to shell out your own cash at them. And as far as special amenities on campus, uh, for libraries there are 20 some different libraries scattered all around the entire campus um, and those are grouped by specific subject groups so you have access to um, any book you can imagine. Um, 
just with your Stanford ID. The biggest library is called Green Library, and that's where most people will go to study. They have a, a media reserve where you can check out um, DVDs and videos and computer programs in the basement, um, and it's also just a great place to study and work. Um, as far as going to the gym, there's Ariaga Gym on East Campus, which, as I described before, has the biggest fitness center, but there's also a graduate student building, um, and there's a smaller gym in a central campus in Trester Express, um, and food carts. Food carts, as mentioned before, there's just a dining hall spread out, and most of them are either attached to your living complexes or within like a two-minute walk, so you're not going to have to trek halfway across campus to get food. Um, and yeah, so the campus is pretty big, but most people bike around, and normally once you've chosen which classes and which department you want to be taking classes in, um, your classes will be centralized, and you'll there are areas of the campus you'll never really go out to on the graduate section. So as far as accommodations go, um, you can there's really three different types of buildings you can live in. You can live in a dorm, you can live in a house, or you can live in a co-op. Um, the dorms, there are some that are all freshman based, um, and there are some dorms that are four class dorms, which means uh, all levels of all grades of students can live there. Um, as far as houses, um, houses are primarily upperclassmen, so just for sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Um, and some of them are just places to live. Some are themed. Um, there's ethnic themed houses, so if you want to live in an Italian community or Spanish community, um, French house, uh, the German Slav house, um, those are all available and you can draw into those if you're looking for a specific environment that you want to live in. There's also focus themed houses um, if you're interested in education or the arts, um, social activists and justice groups, um, the environment. Those are all available as well. Um, and finally you have co-ops. Basically the difference with co-ops and houses is there's uh, it's fully student staffed and organized. So students are in charge of um, rotating and cleaning and cooking, me preparing meals and everything. Uh, so those are the three different types of housing environments. Um, as far as rooms within those houses, the three most common, you have a one-room double. Um, and a one-room double is it's one big room and then two students will share it. So you can do bunk beds or you can split the room down the center however you want to divide it up. Um, those are pretty common. Uh, you also have your one-room singles, which is a smaller room where only you would live in, so it would just be your bed, your desk, um, your own things. And then you also have a two-room double, and a two-room double is basically two singles that are put together by um, just a dividing wall and door. So it's you would go into one single that's lived in by just one person, and then there's another door to get into the next single lived in by another person. Um, some houses have triples and quads where it's either three or four people living in an even bigger room, um, but the majority of people will be living in either a one-room double, two-room double, or a single. Um, and again, like I said, 98% of students live on campus for all four years, so you don't really have to worry about off-campus housing, um, which is convenient because the environment outside of Stanford and Palo Alto is really expensive. You don't want to have to pay to find an apartment, and it would take you 20 minutes just to get on campus. Uh, so it's really nice being able to live on campus. Um, as far as my housing experience, my freshman year I lived in Twain, Twain House in Stern Complex on East Campus, um, and that's an all-freshman dorm. Um, and the all-freshman dorms I, th I thought were really nice. You really get the freshman experience where people are excited to uh, to be trying everything and doing everything and exploring the campus um, and you just get to meet a lot of the people in your class. The all freshman dorms are really nice. Um, you really get the freshman experience where people are excited to be um, meeting people and trying out new clubs and activities and running around on campus. Um, it's a great place to meet friends. Um, Twain where I lived there were a little less than a hundred people and in the Stern Complex as a whole there were about 450 people. Um, so I was constantly meeting new people um, and getting to talk and make friends. Um, so it's just a great place to connect with other people. Um, I've also heard that the four class dorms for freshmen um, are great as well because you have the advantage of getting to know people that are older than you um, that can 
give knowledge and wisdom um, and what classes to take for certain subjects, um, what communities to get involved with on campus, things like that. So I've heard positive experiences from both. It's really just what you're looking for um, your freshman year. Um, I've lived in a house in Governor's Corner called Yoast the last two years. And that's been really nice because there's 50 or 60 people. Um, it's a smaller group, so you get to know people a little bit deeper. Um, you can draw into any dorm or house with up to seven other people. So you can have a draw group of eight. And what that means is you for sure live in that house with that group of people. Um, and that's really nice. It's nice to be able to eat in the same place with the same group of people every day. Um, it builds a really good community. And then as far as most houses and dorms are co-ed where on the hall. So you'll be rooming with someone of the same sex, but on the hall there will be both boys and girls. Um, they have separate restrooms and showers and everything, uh, gender segregated for most of them. Um, and there are some houses that are substance free if you're looking for a place that is that where people won't be drinking or smoking or anything like that. Um, Stanford definitely has its strengths and weaknesses and in this case I think one of the bi biggest strengths is also a weakness um, which is just how intellectually rigorous the classes that you and the opportunities that you have will be. Um, a lot of the classes that you'll be taking are with professors that um, are the experts in their field um, that are working on groundbreaking research. Um, so it's a lot of the classes can be a lot of work. Um, it'll take up a lot of time. You'll be doing writing papers and problem sets, um, but at the same time it'll be rewarding where you will leave with information and knowledge that only a select few in the country may have, even as an undergraduate. Um, if and there are also research opportunities available um, that you can be working really closely with these professors um, and that's really good not just for looking good on a resume but as far as building character building work ethic um, and understanding what you want to do in a more professional perspective to know if this is the career that you want to have you can figure that all out um, in your undergraduate time um, but it can also be a weakness because students are so busy with classes and research jobs, um, different clubs and organizations on campus that um, scheduling anything between uh, more than three people can be very difficult. Um, obviously you're putting in long hours so you sometimes suffer in the sleep department. Um, but that I would say yeah the biggest strength is how ac academically stimulating it is but that also can apply to a weakness because you end up having um, less time to do other things. Um, I think the most rewarding experience that I've had at college is in clubs and organizations. Um, I'm a part of uh, the InterVarsity Christian Fellowship on campus um, and that's really nice just being able to meet with people and be able to talk about faith and religious groups um, from so many different perspectives. Um, I've also served two years on student government uh, planning activities for the freshman and sophomore class um, and it's really nice being able to uh, connect with different types of people, hear where they're coming from, and create projects and opportunities that uh, serve the entire campus. Uh, one of the most challenging experiences has been, I think, I think one of the most challenging experiences has been uh, just dealing with how ambitious people are. Um, I've seen everyone is going, going, going all the time. Um, full schedules packed, so it can be difficult sometimes to uh, connect with people outside of where you're living. You normally get to know the people you live with very well, um, but maintaining friendships once you're not living with people can be difficult because everyone is so busy. Um, but again, that is something that if you prioritize well and um, are good with time management, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, three words to describe Stanford. Um, the first one, I would say ambitious. Um, they're starting a whole new entrepreneur program where they're encouraging students to be making startup businesses, um, to be very innovative with the research that they do, and to look at ways that they can um, fully impact and influence the world around us, uh, even just as students. The second, I would say, is uh, diverse. 
and I'm sure if you go onto Stanford's campus, you'll be able to onto their website, you'll be able to find all the official statistics about diversity. But they're very big on um, ethnic diversity. Um, into, there are plenty of international students all around. Um, and then even things that come down to like a gender and sexual orientation, um, they're very tolerant um, to the LGBT community. Um, there's plenty of support for that, plenty of support for minority groups like uh, Native American communities. Um, there's so many clubs based around um, ethnic and gender identities. Um, so diverse would be the second one. And the third one, I would say uh, supportive. You can walk into any office on campus and they will um, be throwing money at you with grants if you have a project you want to work on. Um, they'll be able to get you in touch with the leading researchers and leading professors if you have questions um, for your different interests. Um, pretty much anything that is an asset to the college is available to you if um, you're willing to look for it. They have lots of money for projects. They have lots of contact, um, even in the just regular professional business world um, with alumni, and those they're more than happy to connect you with those people um, if you're willing to find it. Um, so my overall experience at Stanford has been great. Um, there's just been so many opportunities that at first it was overwhelming, um, and I managed to narrow down where my interests were, figure out what I was really passionate about, and feel really supported and appreciated by at the university in pursuing those things. So the majority of people that come to Stanford are probably coming um, either as engineers, computer science, or um, human biology majors. Uh, human biology is the setup for pre-med, but it is a very um, techie school where it's a lot of computer science, it's in Silicon Valley, um, and there are a lot of engineers, um, anywhere from mechanical, chemical, organic chem, bio, um, material science. There's uh, just so many different ones, but it's definitely the liberal arts and humanities are in the minority. Um, I myself am religious studies, so there are a lot of English, uh, sociology, history majors around, but the majority of people and I think what Stanford is primarily known for is its engineering and computer science classes. Um, as far as adapting to the academic system from high school, it definitely depends on your high school experience. If you took a lot of APs, you'll be similar to, um, or I mean, you, if you took a lot of APs in high school, um, the amount of reading will kind of stay the same. I think the biggest difference is they're interested in how you process information and not just how you um, can memorize and spit information back out. Um, but the school is really supportive about providing uh, tutors and assistance for writing essays and doing problem sets. Um, so there is you know, an adjustment, as you'll have with any college class, and especially with how intellectually difficult the classes can be. But there's also a lot of support and office hours from TAs and the professors, um, the Hume Writing Center. Uh, they work with you, they help you get to where you want to be, they don't expect you to come into college um, as, a, as a perfect college student. They understand it's a process and are willing to work with you for that. Um, courses that I would highly recommend are the creative writing classes. They're all taught by Stegner Fellows, which are um, master's and doctoral students that have grants to Stanford to continue working on their creative writing projects. Um, so they just teach you with so much passion and emphasis. Um, it made me love English and literature in a way that I didn't in high school um, and has challenged me to pursue that as a career. Um, I would, so I would highly recommend the creative writing classes. You don't have to be um, a creative writing or English major or minor. Um, that you can, Anyone can take them. Um, so that's definitely one that I would recommend. Um, I've taken a lot of religious studies and philosophy classes uh, purely just because that's what my major is. And those classes are really nice because if you're interested in humanities and liberal arts, um, very small class sizes. I've had classes where it's been three other people and the professor, and they're taught as seminars where you just read books, read articles, and talk it over for an hour and a half, two hours, um, which is a very different experience than a lot of my friends that are doing computer science or engineering or have, having when they're in a lecture hall with you know 100 students or so. Um, so class sizes are really small, which is nice.
Uh, the most difficult class that I took was probably a human biology class. I was taking it as my natural science uh, requirement, and I'm just not a science person, and it did not go well. I ended up dropping the class. Um, but there's also freedom in being able to drop classes and find requirement classes um, that fit all majors. So I'm a liberal arts religious studies major, and I found a physics class about the universe that wasn't super sciencey. Um, that allowed me to still get my natural science requirement out of the way. Um, if I had to pick a favorite professor, um, I've, I've taken a couple screenwriting classes with a professor named Adam Tobin. Um, just a very knowledgeable guy, very nice guy, very personal. Um, I think he knew everyone's name after the first class and would talk with people after class, just any questions with the industry, very open. In his office hours, you could come in and talk with him, um, and he would try to set you up with contacts or internships or figure out what you wanted to do and how he could help you get you there. So um, even though the film production um, classes, they're limited, uh, they're definitely worth taking as well. Overall, I would say the, acad the college experience at Stanford um, academically is, is almost intertwined with the social aspect. Um, academics are very important. Um, but it's not cutthroat at Sanford. It's not. It doesn't have an East Coast feel. Um, students are happy to um, share notes, have study parties. Um, there's not a competition to see who's going to ruin the curve for a test. Um, it, it's it's very much a group dynamic of we are all over our heads together, and we're going to help keep each other afloat. Um, so it's definitely a good experience. So as far as clubs and groups on campus, um, Stanford is filled with all of those kids that you went to high school with that started their own clubs. Um, so there's there's a large amount of clubs that deal anywhere from ethnic and cultural groups uh, to sexual orientation, different uh, educational and extracurricular hobbies and activities, uh, sports clubs, pretty much anything you can imagine. Um, Stanford does a great job with diversity and making sure that all students are appreciated for their different um, ethnic and cultural backgrounds. So if you're a Filipino and want to join the Filipino American Association Club, or if you're an international student and are looking for um, like a, a Swedish club where you can just meet people from that from your culture, um, people you can relate with, those clubs and groups are always available. If you're interested in um, a specific type of Indian dance, there are numerous clubs there. If you're really into hip-hop or ballet, you can join a dance club. Um, there are ten or so a cappella groups that are huge on campus. Um, and there's so many clubs that are dedicated just to interest. There's Outdoors Redwood Hiking Club. Um, you can do kayaking. You can do intramural sports. They have Ultimate Frisbee, club sports, um, lacrosse. And then social events as well. Like if you're into um, writing like comedic satire, there's two newspapers and publications where you can express that. Um, if you're into drama and performance, um, you can do that. And one of the best things about the clubs is they're interested in engaging students that have experience but also just that have an interest. So if you're interested in learning fencing or taiko drumming, you can just show up at these clubs and they'll they'll teach you and invite you into that culture um, even if you're new. Um, as far as me, I'm involved in uh, InterVarsity Christian Fellowship, which is one of the many religious fellowships on campus that just provides encouragement and support um, in exploring issues of faith and philosophy. Um, I also belonged um, to student government for my freshman and sophomore year. I was a part of Frosch Council and the sophomore class cabinet, and that was a great chance to just um, be able to represent the different students in my class, hear about um, their Stanford experience, hear about ways that we as the government could improve it, um, create events and um, like food drives, charities, dances, um, just pretty much anything that would be able to give back to both the students at Stanford and the community around us. Um, as far as studying abroad, um, there's the Bing Overseas uh, program where you can study in so many places around the world. They have, I studied my sophomore year, spring quarter, I studied in Oxford in the United Kingdom um, and that was a great experience just being uh, fully immersed within the Oxford University program. Um, they have places in Barcelona and Madrid, Spain, Florence, Italy, um, 
Berlin in Germany, uh, Cape Town in South America, Kyoto, Japan, uh, Santiago, Chile, pretty much anywhere you would want to go. Um, either Stanford has a program there where they're sending 30 kids a quarter, um, even like Moscow, Russia, um, Australia. Um, so Stanford is either sending people or you can apply to an independent program and have um, credits be able to transfer it over so that they count towards Stanford credits. Um, another great thing about going abroad is Stanford is huge on offering grants and shelling out money. So if you're in archae if you're really interested in archaeology and want to go work a dig in Jerusalem, you can take a quarter or a semester off, and Stanford will fund you to go there and pay for your supplies, pay for your travel expenses, um, so that you can work on that. If you want to write a novel that's based in New Orleans and you need to do some background research, you can Stanford will fund you to um, pay for your travel, pay for your stay, pay for your food, um, so that you can explore these different interests and passions um, to their greatest degree. Um, as far as spending free time, um, you have choices of staying on or off campus. Most people that spend their time on campus will um, get some exercise in, maybe play some sports or go to a sporting event. Um, there are always drama productions, dance productions, um, a cappella groups, guest speakers on campus. So you can um, just look up anything that you find interesting. Um, you, can, you can probably find something that you would want to go to every night. Um, or just hanging out. You can go to parties um, at different houses or on the row in the Greek scene. Um, there's movie nights. These are all on-campus events. Um, Stanford is also located within an hour from Berkeley. If you drive an hour from the heart of San Francisco, if you take the Caltrain, and you can get to Santa Cruz in an hour, uh, San Jose. So there's just a lot of different Half Moon Bay. Um, there's just so many different options where if you want to go off campus, you can find some um, great tourist spots or places to hang out and explore that are pretty close. Um, as far as the Greek scene, um, the Greek population is about 20% of the campus um, for fraternities and sororities, and half of those fraternities and sororities are unhoused. Um, I think one of the best things about Stanford is that the Greek scene isn't extremely exclusive and it doesn't dominate identities where I have a lot of friends that are in the Greek scene and um, they don't see themselves as belonging to their fraternity and sorority as their fundamental identity and not being able to talk to or interact with people outside of the Greek scene. Um, for Greek parties, um, any Stanford student can get in as long as they show their ID. Um, and again, drinking is drinking is allowed on campus so it removes a lot of the necessity for joining a fraternity or sorority. Um, it's a great opportunity to get to meet people and experience a different side of college life um, but it, it's in no way necessary and there's not this like um, there's not the elitist walk around top dog on campus uh, feel that you may get at other larger state schools. So sports at Stanford is a very interesting thing. Um, Stanford has won the NCAA Director's Cup 17 years in a row, and basically what that means is um, we have the best overall athletics department, over, uh, male and female, over the course of all sports in the NCAA. Um, most recently, our football team has gotten a lot of press um, with um, Andrew Luck, uh, Jim Harbaugh, um, go in a, a pretty solid three-year run. So the football team has definitely picked up and we're hoping to carry a lot of that momentum. Um, women's basketball is always incredible, top, top five, top two. Um, women's soccer is great, um, men's and women's volleyball, um, women's water polo, swimming. Um, basically, if you are, if you play a sport um, and are getting recruited by Stanford or are great at your sport, um, Stanford's one of the best places to play. Um, and if you don't play a sport but like going to sporting events, uh, just the fact that we're in the Pac-10, you're going to get to see some of the best athletes on the West Coast, um, some of the best teams in the country. Um, you'll probably be able to share in one, two, or three NCAA titles per year, um, according to different sports. Um, and it's really interesting because 
the athletes, um, it's again not a big dog on campus type of thing where the athletes are taking the same classes as you are living um, across the hallway from you um, and are very down to earth about it. So you can really talk with them and get to know their experiences, understand them on a more personal level rather than just cheering for them in the stands. Yeah, so again, Stanford is Division I, um, so if it's a, a NCAA sport, we'll be in Division I, which is the highest division, uh, most competitive division. Um, there are sports like uh, lacrosse and rugby that are just club sports that aren't NCAA uh, sanctioned, and those, um, Ultimate Frisbee, those will all compete with um, different club sports around the Bay Area. Um, region and then they, you can go to nationals as well in those um, and so if you did a sport um, in high school that you'd like to continue you can look into doing intramurals and club um, if you don't think you'd be able to make the official Stanford um, D1 squad. Um, I play intramural basketball and soccer um, here and I also rock, I've been rock climbing a lot um, so it's definitely a fun place to just be able to be active it's a very active uh, community where you see people running all the time, biking everywhere. Um, the gym is normally pretty packed all the time. You can always hop in on a um, on a pickup soccer game, a pickup basketball game, uh, pickup ultimate frisbee. They have uh, the aquatic swimming pools are open um, to public use at certain hours. So you can go and do laps. You can take um, you can take one unit classes in anything from. Um, Muay Thai or gymnastics to aerial fabrics, um, ping pong, golf, tennis. Um, they offer those classes if you're just interested in learning as well. So it's it's a um, it's a great school if you're a athlete or just interested in watching and cheering on sports. So as far as admissions, um, I the schools I applied to were. Stanford, UCLA, um, Columbia, Yale, Boston University, um, Northwestern, and Duke. I think I think that was all. Um, and I got into all of them except for Yale and Columbia. Um, and I think one of the reasons I chose Stanford was I was I wasn't completely sure what I wanted to do when I was applying to colleges. I thought I wanted to do screenwriting, um, but I wasn't super certain on it. And so I was looking at colleges that would provide a lot of financial aid, and that narrowed it down to Stanford and Duke, um, which both provide um, great amounts of financial aid um, compared to other state schools and private schools even. Um, and upon visiting both schools, Stanford um, was hands down. Just the weather is incredible. Um, there was such a vibrant, uh, lively community and you could tell that it wasn't just about academics, that there was a very heavy social culture. They were um, very concerned with uh, students maturing in character as well as intellect um, and being able to find things that they're passionate about and go into the world and do that rather than just um, pouring knowledge into their heads. They wanted to give a lot of um, experiences in the business world through internships and through grants um, and find ways to empower student discussions. And I saw that just being on campus for um, a couple weeks. Um, as far as test scores, um, I got a 34 on the ACT and I think a 2200 on the SAT. Um, and I took um, I took a lot of APs in yeah. high school. I think I had 11 or 12, um, and most of those were fours or fives. Um, I had a GPA in high school of. 4.5 or 4.6 um, so I definitely um, worked pretty hard academically um, but I think what really set me apart as far as the application level um, in applying to Stanford was I did four years of student government at my school um, so not only having leadership roles but it definitely shaped, um, shaped the way I viewed uh, just the process of learning the experience of going to school um, and that not all the learning is really happening inside the classroom. A lot of it is happening um, among your peers in social um, social situations. And being able to write about that and reflect on that in my essays, I think, um, set me apart as just somebody with test scores. I also did um, track and cross country in high school, um, did some work in drama productions, um, 
So I think what they want more than test scores is people that are passionate about wanting to do something and taking steps um, even before they get to college to uh, follow their dreams. So if you're really interested in um, becoming a doctor or veterinarian um, and you spend a summer volunteering at a hospital, um, that will go a really long way. I think they look at students as a whole package rather than just um, grades or test scores. Um, as far as making a right fit for this college, I think it's, again, people that are ambitious, that see themselves as being able to make a difference in the world, um, that are willing to take steps on their own and not looking for a college that's going to hold their hand. They want to, um, Stanford wants students that are going to go off and running on their own and just looking for Stanford for support rather than the school to, um, to drag them to meet their potential. So definitely students that are self-motivated um, and passionate about, about um, important things. Um, I think the admissions committee also liked the fact that um, I had done a lot of community service work. I took uh, a couple of humanitarian trips to Kenya and Rwanda when I was in high school and I was able to write about that in my applications. Um, and that again played into just the framework of the way I understand the world and the way I understand other people. Um, and I think I was able to convey that pretty well in my application process. Um, Stanford again is looking not just for people that are going to be able to um, run a business well or perform certain duties, but people that are going to be innovative, um, creative, and are going to change things for the good of humanity, whether that's on a technological or nonprofit business sector, um, whatever the platform it be. They're looking for people that are um, dedicated and passionate about making changes. So if I had to give any advice um, to people applying to Stanford, I would say um, definitely focus on grades in school. Um, that's definitely necessary, um, but it's not sufficient. It's not all you need. You need to um, show that you are a person rather than just a student, um, that you have your own interests, um, and that you're willing to uh, take steps independently to meet that. If you love playing concert piano, continue playing concert piano. Um, I put down that I played drums in a garage band for a couple of years, and I think things like that show that I have my own interests, um, that I'm not just doing what looks good on a college application. And I think that's what they're looking for, is people that are going to um, be aware of their own interests, their own, uh, their own interests and their own passions, and are going to pursue that. Because uh, what's more important than showing that you can ace a test and get good grades is showing that you can um, hold a potential in your head and work to actualize it, and whether that be in the business world or just in your own personal interests and hobbies. Um, so I would say best of luck and um, just be as open to experiences as you can and fully devote yourself to whatever makes you excited about. Um, and if that's Stanford, then that's great. If it's another school that's going to be able to push you and um, encourage you in ways that Stanford wouldn't be able to, then um, that's awesome. Go for that as well.